Hello and welcome back to Sentinels of the Multiverse the video game. Last time we defeated the first villain variant, Baron Blade, a mad bomber Baron Blade to be precise. And in this episode, let's check out the other villain variant, namely Cosmic Omnitron or Omnitron 2. So let's take a little bit of a look here. So at the start of the game, Omnitron enters play Cosmic Powered Exterminator side up. Cards are revealed from the top of the villain deck until H minus two components are revealed and put into play. Remember, H means the number of heroes. So if we're playing with a four villain, a four hero team, that's going to be two. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no components in play, Omnitron flips. At the end of the villain turn, the top card of the villain deck is played. So similarly to normal Omnitron, on this side he gets to play extra cards. But he doesn't just automatically flip like Omnitron. On the back side, at the start of the villain turn, if there are any components in play, flip Omnitron's villain card. Whenever a drone enters play, play the top card of the villain deck. So that can be either less dangerous or incredibly more dangerous. He can combo off kind of quickly and easily on this side. At the end of the villain turn, Omnitron does some damage. So definitely different than regular Omnitron. Let's jump in. Our hero team is going to be Legacy, Tempest, Ra, and Scientific Tachyon. And we're going to be playing in, of course, Megalopolis. Let's go. Power source unknown, directive, destroy. Cosmic Omnitron has very significant story implications if you care about the story for Sentinels, but I'm not going to be covering that here. Disintegration Ray is fine, Interpolation Beam is annoying, but we can deal with it. Oh man, first turn! Ugh. Well, things just got a little bit spicy. I'll remind everybody what these do. This is a card that deals damage at the start of his turn, we're not worried about that. This deals damage every time we draw a card, not great. At the start of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target X lightning damage, where X equals the current HP of this card. This is a card that needs to be dealt with immediately, and I plan to deal with it. <laughs> Luckily, I've got a pretty high damage team right now. Um, no. Tempest does, oh, see right there, Tempest does some pretty good damage, as does Ra. Ra's a little bit more single target focused, and Tempest is a little bit more focused on crowd control. And when I say a little, that's like their entire deal. <laughs> but Tachyon can also do some decent damage. She's just a little bit of a, more of a slow burn character, if you want to call it that. I am going to draw, because Ra has a lot of health. I'm actually going to play the Fire Blast, because I can destroy this thing- oh, shoot. We're being- ugh, darn it. Ah, let me try that again. You're probably going to see me do that a few times throughout the series. I get lost in numbers, and I don't have anybody to help talk me through any of this right now, so I don't have anybody to go, oh hey, that doesn't actually just do five damage. So let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Alright, threat dealt with. Sweet. And then we'll see if maybe Tachyon can help us do a little bit more damage here. How many? How much damage has he taken? Three. That's a cute little trick. With cards like this, you can usually right-click it, and it'll show you stats. What does damage? That does not... I don't think there's going to be a solution here. Three, six. No, not quite. So in... In that case, I am actually going to do Sucker Punch instead to get rid of that thing. Sorry, that that was on purpose, That what you just saw there. That was me looking at the calculations because it's easier than doing it in my head. Alright, so Super Scientific Tachyon looks at the bottom two cards of any deck. If they are the same type, you get to play them. If not, you get to throw them in the trash. Seeing as Tachyon operates by having burst cards in her trash, she loves this. Oh, man. Oh, I should have just done the damage. Well, it's not going to matter. It was two of the same card. There we go. Okay, that actually worked out beautifully. That's what happens when you have good opening hands. Doesn't always work out like that. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> the traffic pile up back there. Rooftop Combat, one of my personal favorite cards. We've probably seen it before, but I will remind you guys what it does. Increase all damage dealt by one. When this card enters play, destroy all other environment cards. While this card is in play, environment cards cannot be played. When hero targets deal non-hero character cards 10 or more damage in a single round, since this card entered play, destroy this card. I like that card very much. All right, so he got a drone. So he's gonna, you know, chain a little bit here. Three damage, four damage because of rooftop combat. Rooftop combat is one of those kinds of cards that is going to boost everybody, but because there's four of us and one of him, I usually consider those cards an advantage. He has the adaptive plating subroutine out right now. That means when we hit him with a damage type, he becomes immune to that damage type. We have a ball lightning that will destroy two ongoings, and seeing as this is his only ongoing that he has in his entire deck, I don't see any disadvantage in just playing that right now. So now he's immune to melee, which doesn't really matter for this team because Legacy is the only person who does melee damage and he doesn't do that much of it. But it is pretty important to keep in mind. This thing can get obnoxious. It's not always a deal breaker, but it's really annoying, especially especially for heroes like Tempest and Ra who like to do excuse me, multiples of the same damage type in a game. So let's just get rid of that because we can. All right. Much like regular Omnitron, Cosmic Omnitron has 100 HP, which means you can really just go ham. <laughs> it's fun. I like it. Although, to be honest, I do like fighting standard Omnitron better. I don't know why. Cosmic Omnitron just kind of doesn't do it for me. I think it's a little bit of a nostalgia factor, because when I played this in college, we played the base set, but none of us had any of the variants. Let's just do that. That's going to do one damage to everything which is in this case just one thing, which is actually kind of weird for Omnitron. And then we get to draw a card. Um, that's not good. We're, get, we're being forced to play this, which means we have to destroy an ongoing, which means we had to destroy our own ongoing. That was too bad. All right. That can happen sometimes. I might as well play this. There's... I'm never going to use it, but why not? Uh, well. Police back up! They're going to start hitting Omnitron! Yay! I guess we did enough damage to get rid of rooftop combat. Okay, there's a drone. Oh, terraforming. That card destroys whatever is in the environment and then plays as many cards as were destroyed. So we don't care about the component. The component will be gone by the time it has to do it to be with anything with flipping. And for chaining off a, dro a droid, that could have been worse. Um, yeah, we'll hit this guy. Tempest will get rid of him with his base power. Just a reminder, Thok does three damage and draws a card. Let's see. Localized Hurricane is going to be nice here. I don't think I'm going to play it this turn because I actually want the uh, the AoE effect here, which means it's going to hit everything. But it's nice to know I have it coming up for next turn. And I'm not going to play it now because when it's out, Tempest takes more damage, so I can just play it next turn. But yeah, I wanted to get rid of that droid. Ooh, Cleansing Downpour. I don't think that's going to matter in this, in, this, uh, in this game, but power. Each hero target regains 2 HP. That's a nice card. It can be nice to use that. But I don't feel like I really get to use it all that often, but it can be nice. Mm, guess I'll just use Inferno. That's kind of a crowd control card, but it's the best damage I've got right now. And I kind of just want to keep things moving. He hasn't really had a chance to gain a ton of momentum yet, and I feel like if we can just hit him hard, we can maybe keep it that way. Although having Inspiring Presence be gone is obnoxious. Um, ooh! Fleet of Foot. Everybody draws a card. And, ooh! There we go. That's good. We got it back. Hut Goggles, so we can play another card. Fleet of Foot lets us play even more cards. You draw three, and then you play two. Oh my goodness. It's, uh... Oh, you discard. Sorry. Draw three cards. Discard two. So let's get rid of that. That's a burst. 
That's a burst, but I want to keep it. I don't feel like I need two of these. This is environment removal, but Tempest just drew his environment removal, so I don't think I need to keep both of those. It's also ongoing removal, but Omnitron doesn't have a lot of ongoing, so I care much less about that. Hostage situation. Hero cards cannot be played. Hey. Uh, well, this is going to be a boring turn, and there goes everybody's ongoings, which I'm not actually sure we had any. And everybody's going to take five damage, except for... Oh, I guess we did have some. Except for Tempest, who had damage resistance, which unfortunately just got blown up. Alright, things are starting to get a little hairy. Raw's at a lower HP than I'm comfortable with. But I think we've probably gotten past the point of this battle where I'm really super worried. I may end up eating those words. But we'll see. Omnitron is technically classed at difficult, or Cosmic Omnitron is classed at difficulty level 2, whereas, no, he's he's level 3, whereas regular Omnitron was level 2. I have never really considered Cosmic Omnitron to be a 3, to be completely honest. He's, I just don't think he's at the level of a boss or a dawn. Alright. Haha. -ha. We get stuff. Careful with Sucker Punch. I don't remember if I mentioned this before or not, but if you are at two or fewer HP, you will destroy yourself. It was not a fun moment when I discovered that one. Alright. Don't really need that. This can be a nice card. It lets you discard cards to do some damage, but I don't want to discard any of my hand right now, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Don't need two of these. Mm, let's get rid of that, actually. I say I don't need two of any given card, but we did just watch him blow up a bunch of our cards. So it can be nice to have some backup. Speaking of backup, hello, friend. I don't think there's any way to boost that damage, unfortunately. Not a droid. All right. Yeah. Okay, so Synaptic Interruption just intercepted that damage, and we're gonna shoot it back at Omnitron. And put another burst in the trash. It's getting to be time to check to see how many bursts we have, and to see if that Lightning Reflexes can take him out or not. I think it's probably still too early, but we are getting there. Legacy Ring, always nice. Now is the time for Localized Hurricane do... Oh, I forgot that does group damage. You know what? It ended up working out anyway, because we didn't want to get that blown up. So, deal damage, and then we get to draw cards, I believe. Okay. A little late for Electrical Storm to be useful, but it is still nice. It's automatic damage at the beginning of his turn. His meaning Tempest. <sighs> Flame Spike lets you use an additional power, so it's kind of a waste to use it now, but if I do the damage now, I might be able to kill him with Lightning Reflexes. Or Lightspeed Barrage, I mean. The big card that blows everything up. So let's just do the damage and we'll skip using the second power. Or, or not! I might just chuck my staff at him. Why not? You can destroy the Staff of Ra. It deals projectile damage, and you do lose it, but... Deals damage in a pinch. It essentially may have just won the game. Alright, so first of all, let's do as much damage as we can now. Fleet of Foot, again, lets everybody draw one card and then, let, then lets you play another one. Alright, so we got two light speed barrages. We have 13 bursts in the trash. Here we go. And we got him. Thank you, for, thank you to Ra for throwing his staff. The most dignified way for the sun god to take care of an enemy. Alright, and that is it for standard difficulty. We've seen all four of the, of the base villains, plus Ambuscade, who's from Mini Pack 1. We've seen both of the variants, and that's the end of standard. Starting next episode, we're going to be taking a look at advanced mode. Advanced mode came with the original core set. It is not just in the video game version, but it's basically what it sounds like. It's all of the same villains we just saw, but taken up a notch. They all have a little extra rule to them. 
So thank you very much for watching this episode, and hopefully I'll see you next time for the beginning of Advanced Mode. Bye-bye!